All right, here we go. Today, you will need your notebook. Get out your notebook, the purple notebook, and open it up to the very next blank page. And at the top, I need you to write geometry basics. That's what we're going to do today, geometry basics. Okay, pause the video if you need more time to do that. I'm moving forward, here we go. So we know these shapes. There are four different shapes here that we should already know. We talked about this one over here on the left yesterday. We should know these two from elementary and then this one we talked about last week. So this one is called a square. This one is called a rectangle. And these two are the hard ones. Remember I say this looks like a square that got slapped. It is called a parallelogram, parallelogram. And this last one over here is a trapezoid. Remember these names so you know what we're talking about. Trapezoid, square, parallelogram, rectangle. Okay, we're gonna be talking about how to find the area and perimeter of every shape. So, first we're gonna start with perimeter. Do you guys remember how to find perimeter? If you don't, uh, it's the distance all the way around a shape, and if we have this shape where every side is eight inches long, so it's a square, the way to find perimeter is to add all sides. So you could do eight plus eight plus eight plus eight, or you could do eight times four because there are four sides. One, two, three, four, multiply by eight. Go ahead and do that right now. Okay. Fantastic job. You should get 32 inches. Next, we are going to look at the perimeter of the parallelogram. A parallelogram is very similar as far as the math, but this time they're not all four the same size. So there's more than one way to do it. These are the options of how you could do it. Here we go. You could add each side, 15 plus 15 plus six plus six, because those are the four sides. You could do 15 plus six, that's two sides, and then multiply that by two. Or you could do 15 times two, because there's two 15s, plus six times two because there's two sixes. More than one way to get this done. Now, it is your turn to do it. Congratulations, you got it right. If you said 42, 42 centimeters was our total. Now, we're gonna move on to area. Remember, area is the 2D space inside of a shape, and it always has the label of units squared. Uh, how do you guys remember to find the area? Uh, the way we do it, well, really, there's lots of ways to find area. It depends on the shape and depends on how you like to do it because some shapes have more than one way to get there. So here are these three shapes we're going to focus on for this lesson. The square, the rectangle, and the parallelogram. Do you remember the formula for the area of these three shapes? If your answer had something to do with base and height, you are correct because the area formula for all three of these shapes is base times height. Now, I want to take a moment and I want to add this to your notes. Boom. Put it in your notes. You need to know that base times height is how you find the area of a square, a rectangle, and a parallelogram. You need to know how to find area of these three shapes using that formula. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. If we have this uh, square, we have our base is eight, our height is eight. To do this, we do base times height, so eight times eight, and that's how we get 64 inches squared. I want you to recognize it says inches squared. It does not say just inches, it is inches squared. Make sure you know and label correctly. Now, your turn, try to do this problem. We know it's base times height, we see our base is 11 and our height is 11. Give it a shot. Congratulations, you got it right. 121 inches squared or square inches. If you had to use your multiplication chart on that, that is perfectly awesome because you're using the tools that are provided for you. Now, let's move on to one that's a little bit uh, more difficult maybe. It's a rectangle, base times height still. This time our base is 10, our height is four. Four times 10, we get 40 centimeters squared. Okay, that should be um, something we recognize, something we can do. Now it's your turn to do it on your own. Ready, set, go. 
Base is 9, height is 7. Throw a party for yourself if you got 63 centimeters squared. Yay, you. <laughs> okay, uh, good job. We had to do 9 times 7 to find our uh, answer 63 centimeters squared. Now we're moving on to one that is less familiar, the parallelogram. Remember, it is base times height, and height is when it's straight up and down, just like this. Straight up and down is your height. Diagonal lines are not how tall you are. So remember, our base here is 6. Our height is 11. We are going to do base times height, so 6 times 11, to get our answer of 66 inches squared. It is still squared because it is area. Okay. So let's try it for you on your own. Ready, set, go. Base times height. Look at the numbers. Make sure you're doing the correct math. Yes. Congratulations. Good job. If you got 36 centimeters squared or square centimeters as your answer, you did it right. Our base was 4. Our height was 9. The 12 was just a distracting number. So we didn't use it at all. So 4 times 9, and that gave us 36 centimeters squared. Great job, great job, great job. Okay, now we are done with team practice, and you are going to be practicing on your own for these three shapes. Three shapes. You know that you have to find area using base times height, and perimeter is adding all the sides together. Don't get confused over here on the parallelogram. This height of 13 inches is not one of the sides. Sorry about that. Okay, so this height is not one of the sides. Don't get confused when you're doing perimeter. Try it on your own, and we will check answers uh, after you've tried it. Ready, set, oh, write it down in your notebook. A notebook is a good place to put it. Did you get the square done yet? If you did, this is the correct answer for the square. The square was 20 by 20 times 20 to find the area of 400 centimeters squared and then 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 to get 80 centimeters as your perimeter. I did it like this in my book. Okay, now move on to the rectangle. Move on to the rectangle and try to find its area and perimeter. How'd we do? Did you did it? Did you get it? Area was 147 inches squared. And the perimeter was 56 and inches. Uh, this is how I did it in my book. I did it a little bit different than uh, what is on the screen. So if you need to pause and see what I did, you can show that. Okay, last one is the parallelogram. The parallelogram is the last shape that you're going to do on your own for this video. Um, I believe in you. I know you can do it. Remember, don't let this... 13, that's a height, confuse you when you're trying to find perimeter. And don't let this diagonal 19 confuse you when you're trying to find the area. Okay, you can do it. All right, there we go. Uh, the math that we did on this one was um, for area, we had to multiply 8 times 13. And we got 104 inches squared. And remember, we did 8 because it was their base and 13 because it was the height. Hopefully we did not get confused for the 19 that's diagonal. 19 plus 19 plus 8 plus 8 was our perimeter. We only have to do the actual sides when we're doing perimeter. We did not include the 13 because that is a height and that is not one of the actual sides of the parallelogram. Here's the work I did in my notebook. Hopefully you did something similar in yours. Okay, so what's going to happen next is I'm going to put a code on the screen for a uh, quizzes that will be live for the next uh, two days, and you will need to complete it, and if you want to get a good score um, for your grade, you must do the whole quizzes and get at least 75% correct. If you do not get more than 75% correct, you do not get the full grade. So make sure that when you put the code in for quizzes that you get a good score. And if you don't get a good score, retry it and retry it until you do get 75% or better. 
Uh, I just decided to change the scoring. If you get a 65% or better, that's how you're going to get all the points for today. So there's 15 questions on this quiz. If you can get 10 of them right, then you get all the points for today. If you do not get 10 of them right, you do not get all the points for today. So make sure you are using your notes to help you and you're really trying your best to do well. Use your um, agenda as a tool. Page 40 has the multiplication chart. Use pen and paper to help you. It's your brain, your name, and uh, you can do it. I believe in you. Good luck.